Introducing a completely redesigned experience that you can sense. And that senses you. The new Dell Latitude laptops bring your work closer to you. Cyclone Kiralee intensifies beyond expectations, smashing the North Queensland coast now as a Category 3 monster storm. The Whit Sundays belted, coastal communities warned to take shelter. Your special cyclone coverage live tonight from Townsville and right across the impact zone. The southeast bracing for severe storms, the vital check to avoid an expensive home cleanup. Tax cut changes, the opposition calls the Prime Minister a liar and demands an early election. And one ball could change it all. Have you got your ticket for tonight's record $150 million Powerball? This is Nine News Queensland. Good evening, live from Townsville tonight. This is Ground Zero with Tropical Cyclone Kiralee making landfall as we go to air. The emergency situation has escalated rapidly this afternoon. The system intensifying into a dangerous Category 3 storm. Emergency warnings are right now in place all the way from Innisfail to Serena. We have reporters standing by right across the key disaster zones for tonight's special cyclone coverage. First, live to Lily Greer at Alva Beach, just south of here. Lily, the weather is bad enough here. It must be really ramping up where you are. Yeah, you're right, Andrew. Residents here in the Burdekin, as well as people visiting town like us, they all receive text messages today telling them to stay off the roads and to take shelter, and that is exactly what we are doing right now. Alba Beach right now is a town very much in lockdown. People are not out there on the street because the conditions, they're simply too volatile. The wind gusts here are so strong that they nearly sweep you off the, your feet. They're certainly strong enough to bring down trees around town, and I can tell you when you're out there and you're outside, Every time those wind gusts come through, you think the worst of it has hit, it dies down and then it picks up right again even more intensely. Kiralee is closing out on Queensland. You can certainly feel her presence in this region. And I know a lot of North Queenslanders, they're going to bed tonight wondering what sort of damage they're going to wake up to. Power lines plummeting, trees down too. Just trees coming down, now the rain's coming in, so... Ah, oh, it's just North Queensland, eh? Another cyclone. As Kiralee closes in, Alva Beach is a minefield. One resident has already had a very close call. We went to open up the gate and realised that there was literally a fire power pole, a power line directly in front, laying across the, the gate. And these Burdekin locals have a front row seat. Just watching the sea and enjoying a bit of cool air. See how rough it can get. The system starting as a spectacle, quickly turning to a raging storm. Kiralee was tipped to be a Category 2 cyclone. Mid-afternoon, she defied those predictions, powering towards Queensland as a severe Category 3. Residents right across North Queensland told to stay inside. Holy s***. And for good reason. The heavily populated city of Townsville is right in the path of Kiralee. As that system moves towards the coast, near the centre of that we'll see the heaviest amount of rainfall. The garrison city, picturesque this morning, conditions quickly deteriorating. Clouds building, rain setting in. It was a sprint to the finish for shoppers. Stores closing, restaurants waterproofing as best they can. Townsville, a ghost town, and this is why. We're asking people to stay indoors from about 2pm and begin sheltering in place. Announcements airing across hotel PA systems. Remain calm, stay inside the room, take shelter in the strongest part of the room, away from the windows and doors. The best space is in the bathroom. Text alerts sent to tens of thousands. This part of the North Queensland coast could cop wind gusts of up to 170 kilometres per hour tonight. You really don't want to be outdoors with some of these gusts. Power outages, highly likely. Our key message to the community is to be prepared and that preparation should include being without power for a minimum of three to four days and potentially in some of those residents here heeding that advice. Well, fill up now because you never know when the power is going to drop off. Last time we had problems, it was seven or eight days before we had any power. 
Right now, all eyes are on the cyclone, but once she crosses the coast, the danger will be far from over. As a tropical low, ex-cyclone Kiralee is expected to bring flooding rains. We could see isolated totals of up to 300 millimetres in a 24-hour period as this system crosses the coast. Swift water rescue teams are now stationed in towns across the north, ready for rescues if the time comes. ADF aircraft are also on standby. Tonight, cowboy country is in for a wild ride. To weather expert Luke Bradnam now in Bowen. Uh, Luke, good evening to you. The wind, uh, it's bad enough here where you are. It's been building there all day. Yeah, that's right, Lofty, in Bowen this evening. Now, we woke this morning to winds gusting around 50 kilometres an hour. Right now, gusting just shy of 80 kilometres an hour. That is nothing like what we're seeing at the centre of this system. Uh, currently gusting, as we just heard, around 170 kilometres an hour. Now, anything over 164 kilometres an hour is a severe tropical cyclone, and that is why Kiralee was upgraded this afternoon to now become a severe Category 3 storm. When that eye does cross the coast later this evening. Uh, those winds we're being told from the Bureau won't just be contained to the Townsville area. Anywhere from air through to us in Bowen can expect sustained winds of 120 kilometres an hour and gusting potentially up to 170 kilometres an hour. Now as for exactly where she is at the moment, well she's on track to make landfall around 9.30 tonight which is sooner than expected and that could not be worse timing. The reason for that, high tide tonight in Townsville is 9.30 30. So expect a storm surge. In fact, the Bureau warning areas, particularly low-lying areas south of Townsville through to uh, the Whitsunday coast, uh, to expect that storm surge and look out for uh, minor flooding this evening. Now, uh, uh, at the moment, she's cu uh, currently tracking around 25 kilometres an hour. She has sped up, and that's great news. The m quicker she moves, the sooner she leaves us, and we shouldn't see that lingering shower activity like we saw with Jasper just last month. But uh, Lofty, she's certainly thrown a few curveballs to us uh, so far this week. Has Kiralee got any more surprises in store? I'll be back later in the bulletin with the full weather forecast. It's a very quickly changing situation, isn't it? Thanks, Luke. Let's go to Jacob Chico now, who is in Airlie Beach. Jacob, the Whitsunday Islands were at the first, really, in the firing line. Andrew, they were. It was around 9.30 this morning when wind gusts of up to 115 kilometres an hour were recorded at Hamilton Island. For residents who call the island home and also the many tourists there, they were told to stay indoors today until those conditions eased. And there was a similar story at Hayman and Daydream Island as well. Those winds this morning were strong and that's why those warnings were in place. This was very much a changing situation throughout the day and we know travel to and from the islands is extremely difficult due to the nature of the weather changing and that's why everyone in those island communities have been asked to exercise caution and certainly not to become complacent. Here where we are at Airlie Beach this evening we've seen the winds pick up quite drastically over the last hour or so and that's the message from the Bureau this evening. More strong winds are on the way tonight and into tomorrow. Queensland's majestic islands were the first to feel the force of Cyclone Kiralee. Magnetic, Daydream, Hamilton, all getting a battering. We're seeing winds of approximately 70 to 80 kilometres per hour on Hamilton Island and gusts of up to 115 kilometres per hour. Tourists forced to spend their tropical holiday sheltering from the storm inside. I've actually been really good doing a ring around and check in on everyone, make sure everyone's OK and sharing links about what we can expect and things like that. The wildlife clinging on to anything they could on the mainland, the wild weather arrived by mid-morning. Airlie Beach battered with strong winds, which didn't stop the morning beach walk or a dash to the bottle shop. That's yeah. it. Pretty much sit on the boat and drink beers, I think. That's probably about all we can do. North Queenslanders have done this before. Cyclone Debbie in 2017 caused widespread destruction here. Locals are cautious but prepared. I've done most of my prep, but I thought I'd grab some sandbags and maybe a couple more batteries. We're just going to keep an eye on the weather and um, just go with the flow that way. You know, we've got some precautions of sandbags. The level of preparation has been over 40,000 sandbags um, now consumed uh, to support uh, the preparation by our community groups. Pontoons at Shoot Harbour are being tested. This backpacker's paradise is tonight looking anything but. We were yeah. going to the Wet Sundays on a boat tour, but it got cancelled. In fact, the water was off limits right up the North Queensland coast, not that this kite surfer seemed to mind. 
A little thing like a cyclone not going to stop you? No, nah, <laughs> hopefully the wind should be pretty good. The sea is a churning mess at Bowen, waves crashing onto boardwalks as the edge of the system neared the coast. Businesses are boarded up. <laughs> Residents tonight sheltering in place. Authorities say it's now too late to relocate. Instead, we wait for daylight to see what damage Kiralee causes. The next few days will be critical and I ask for the community's patience and assistance during this time. Jacob Chigo, Nine News. Well, let's go straight to weatherman Tim Davies now, who is in Townsville. Tim, you've got a vantage point as this system crosses the coast. I certainly do, Andrew. Good evening to you. Just a couple of hours ago, there was blue sky and a sense of a relaxed feel amongst many of the locals here. But since Kiralee was upgraded to a Category 3 system, well, there is a renewed seriousness about this cyclone as it closes in on this region tonight. The Ville Hotel, where I am this evening, is in lockdown, like many hotels right across this part of the Queensland coastline. The guests here told to take shelter in their hotel rooms or head to the communal function centre which is downstairs on the lower level. This evening, we are starting to feel the full effects of Kiralee. We've lost the view on a number of occasions across to Magnetic Island with reports coming through of power lines down there and around 35 homes, uh, 3,500 homes and businesses without power across the region and on Magnetic Island this evening. And, Andrew, all of that comes just as Kiralee starts to kick in. We're yet to see exactly what this cyclone will deliver tonight. Yeah, it's only just beginning, isn't it? Thanks, Tim. Well, let's go live now to emergency headquarters in Kedron, where the disaster response is already being coordinated uh, tonight. Michelle Tapper is there. Michelle, busy night ahead there. It certainly is, and uh, emergency crews have been working around the clock, providing information to people in North Queensland, and they're also coordinating the disaster response here, and that means liaising with police, SES, and receiving regular updates from the Weather Bureau. And they're also monitoring the situation here in South East Queensland, because we're expecting some severe storms on Sunday and into early next week. And for all the latest information, I'm joined by Deputy Commissioner Shane Schleppi. Shane, how many emergency personnel have have you got on the ground up north and um, how are the communities preparing for tonight's storm? Well, we've now got over 300 additional emergency services personnel deployed into the north to support our, our local staff. And they're um, obviously helping the community prepare for the storm and they're ready to respond as well. So the community's done a terrific job. Have you had many calls for, to the SES for assistance and what kind of assistance are they providing? Well, today we've had just over 160 calls already for the SES, but most of that's been around preparation, sandbagging. Uh, the community have done a terrific uh, job in preparing. We've now used over 40,000 sandbags in the community, which shows the level of preparedness. They're taking it seriously. And obviously a long night ahead for emergency crews and, of course, residents in far north Queensland. Any last-minute advice? Well, now's the time to seek shelter and stay home. Stay off our roads. If you do have to be on our roads, just remember, don't drive through flood water. If it's flooded, forget it. If you need help tonight, if it's life-threatening, call triple zero. Otherwise, you can call our SES on 132 500. Thanks so much for your time, Shane. Some great advice there. And uh, back to you, Andrew. Thanks, Michelle. Well, this rain and wind uh, is really, really starting to build now. And you wouldn't believe it, we just had a kite surfer turn up behind us here and give it a go and realise this is not on. Good move. Alison, as this cyclone makes landfall, we'll be back uh, a bit later in the bulletin with uh, the very latest on the warnings. Yes, yeah, certainly a tense a few hours ahead, Andrew. We're thinking of you and everyone in the path of that storm. Well, back here in the southeast, while we're no longer in the path of the cyclone's tail, residents are being told to brace for severe storms in the coming days. Let's go live to Meg Sides. Meg, what is the Bureau saying? Good evening, Alison. Well, we are in a state of extremes at the moment as we do keep a close eye on Cyclone Kiralee to make sure it doesn't track south. Other areas of the state have been sweltering through intense heat. Birdsville today reaching a staggering 49.4 degrees and heat wave conditions are expected to continue to develop over the next few days in the southeast. Here in Brisbane, we're forecast to hit 36 degrees on Saturday, while Ipswich is set to reach 38. That will be short-lived, though. There's there is a cool change on the way which could result in severe storms in the southeast over the weekend with isolated heavy rainfalls and strong winds. Today we have seen some people preparing, making sure they're stocked up on sandbags just in case.
So we could be seeing showers and storms across the south of the state that are producing more rainfall than usual because of the system in the north. So we're encouraging everyone today to stay up to date on all of our forecasts and warnings. And Alison, later in the bulletin, we'll have all the tips you need to make sure your house is prepared in case of extreme weather. All right, thanks, Meg. Well, hopefully the weather will hold out for at least the start of the long weekend as Australia Day celebrations take place across the southeast. But not everyone will be celebrating tomorrow. Thousands expected to attend Brisbane's Invasion Day March and many events will look different this year. For over four decades, it's been an iconic event in the Brisbane calendar. It's a chance for everyone to be an owner of a thoroughbred. But this year, the Storybridge Hotel's traditional cockroach races won't be taking place on Australia Day. It's still on the Australia Day weekend. It's still part of celebrating. Shifting instead to Saturday, but not in protest. Just the operating cost on a public holiday. We're trying to keep the, no cover charge on entry. It's not the only tweak to January 26 traditions this year. Eight Queensland councils are among 80 local government areas shifting their citizenship ceremonies away from the controversial date. Brisbane City is going ahead as normal, though, to welcome 550 new constituents. Just down the road, thousands of Invasion Day protesters are expected to march from Queen's Gardens to Musgrave Park. It's not so much the march that's important, it's, it's the message that we bring to the march each year. What it should be, it should be a day of truth-telling. More sombre commemorations happening earlier in the day. Benarawa's annual Survival Day ceremony at Oxley Creek from 7.30am. For us to come together and acknowledge um, the history of our nation. At the Gabba, the second test between Australia and the West Indies will be shrouded in controversy. The words Australia Day banned. While for some, it's simply all about family fun. The Sandstone Point Hotel has rolled out a 50-metre slip and slide ahead of free festivities tomorrow expected to welcome up to 3,000 people. Also featuring lamington eating and thong throwing competition. Cool. 100 out of 100. Yeah, we like to add more and more for all the families to come along to. Claire Todd Hunter, Nine News. Tax cut changes. The opposition calls the Prime Minister a liar Why they're calling for an early election. Plus, tourists forced to abandon a seaplane after an aborted takeoff. Also tonight, enormous fireball, crews battle a fuel tanker blaze before a deadly detonation. And wouldn't it be nice, at the end of sport, some extra extravagant ideas on how to spend tonight's record-breaking $150 million Powerball. Nine News, brought to you by Stan. Dramatic scenes on Sydney Harbour today. A seaplane forced to abort takeoff. The eight UK tourists on board having to quickly exit before clinging to the damaged aircraft in choppy waters waiting to be rescued. The pilot praised for getting his passengers to safety. No one was injured in the incident. A tussle over tax is underway with the opposition launching a scathing attack on the Prime Minister. But with every taxpayer said to have more in each pay packet, Anthony Albanese is adamant he's acting in the country's best interests. Long live. With protesters chanting outside... Albanese, you can't hide! ..the Prime Minister in front of friendlier faces, insisting he's not hiding, but helping. Australians are looking for more help. Australians deserve more help. And today I can confirm that more help is on the way. Anthony Albanese confirming a new tax policy, the opposition confirming new attacks. He truly is the Pinocchio of politics. The liar in the lodge. I think at the moment the Australian Prime Minister owes an apology to the Australian public, but he hasn't given it. I'll tell you what my integrity is. Not looking at low and middle income earners and saying, sorry, I'm just the Prime Minister, I'm not in a position to help you. You won't have to wait for tax returns. The money will come in each pay packet, meaning when June rolls into July, those earning $45,000 per year will get $15.46 more in their weekly pay. For those earning $90,000, $37.10 more. For Australians on $150,000, more than $70 more. And anyone on more than $190,000 a year will get $87 more per week. Is this really the best that Labor can do in the middle of a housing, rental and cost of living crisis. This package will have to go through the Parliament. They say they want more. This is a package that we'll put to the Parliament and we're confident that it'll be carried by the Parliament. 
a new tax battle that began at breakfast. When we find a better way to deliver bigger tax cuts to more people to help them with the cost of living, then our responsibility is to do that. I think you should call an election and put the change position to the Australian people. Advice from Treasury stating the redesign will not impact the inflation outlook, meaning no impact on interest rates. The Treasurer revealing he consulted Reserve Bank Governor Michelle Bullock to confirm. The Prime Minister insists this is not the end of cost of living relief, hinting at more support in the May budget. Tax talk may be tiring. The government hoping the changes help everyone rest a little easier. Charles Croucher, Nine News. Russia claims more than 60 Ukrainian prisoners of war were killed when one of its aircraft crashed near the Ukrainian border. The Kremlin say it was shot down and has called it a terrorist act. Ukraine, however, denies any involvement. It was like a scene from a movie set. In just seconds, these flames engulfed an intersection in Mongolia, erupting into a fatal fireball. Three firefighters were killed and 11 others injured. The blaze started when a truck carrying liquefied natural gas crashed into a car. A 12-storey apartment building also caught fire. The urgent warning to the southeast as tropical cyclone Kiralee batters our state's north. Queenslanders are being urged to be prepared for more wild weather. In a Nine News special report, we reveal a vital household safety check that could save you a fortune. That's ahead. We return to our state's north after the break as tropical cyclone Kiralee batters our coastline, our reporter live in the firing line. Thus, a controversial mayor's surprise return to politics. The major changes coming to the post office, how it will affect you. And charging ahead, a new high tech Aussie first hits the southeast. Nine News, brought to you by Australia's number one selling vehicle, Ford Ranger. In an Australian first, the Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner has flicked the switch on three brand new high tech charging stations across the southeast. The stations will be able to charge Brisbane Metro vehicles in record time. This is extraordinary technology. It is cutting edge uh, and it will allow a Brisbane Metro vehicle to be charged in just six minutes with a fast charge. Three Brisbane Metros will be parked at the charging bays with a further four new vehicles planned to arrive every month between now and when services commence later this year. A former Pasali era councillor who took over as Ipswich mayor but later lost his job over criminal charges is gunning to get back into council. Andrew Antonelli sat down exclusively with Nine News, making his case to come back as a councillor despite tumultuous years in public office. Andrew Antonelli wants to get back to what he knows best, Ipswich City Council. Well, obviously, I've got a lot of unfinished business. He spent about 18 years there, after all, during the rise and fall of now-disgraced former mayor Paul Pasali. Do you think people of Ipswich should forgive Paul Pasali? Uh, well, I'm a Christian person, so, yeah, I certainly do, and I'd like to think others would as well. Mr Antonelli took over as mayor in the wake of Pasali before being charged by the Triple C himself in 2018 for allegedly using thousands of dollars of council money to buy charity items. Those years were tough. It was very hard to get work anywhere. He received a six-month suspended sentence but was acquitted on appeal in 2020 after proving he never used the charity goods himself. I truly believe in many respects the Triple C wanted to break me. The former police officer says he was shocked at the revelations of the exorbitant spending of his former council leadership team recently revealed by Nine News. You were a councillor at that time. What, what did you know? Uh, look, we knew very little. In fact, um, I was just as surprised as anybody else seeing that story. He says he'll put the city's waste companies on notice, raising questions given his previous mayoral campaign was heavily funded by fertiliser company Plancove, whose director also directs Newgrow, the operator of the Swan Bank recycling plant. Will he be supporting you this time as well? I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to um, uh, the owners of Newgrow. Mr Antonelli is nominating for Division 3, along with three other candidates so far, including the two incumbents. Josh Bavis, Nine News. The United Nations says one of its relief agency shelters in southern Gaza has been struck with at least nine people killed. It comes as an Israeli government spokesperson ruled out a ceasefire despite reports negotiations were progressing. 
There's been a gruesome discovery in a remote part of the California desert. Six people found shot dead about 80 kilometres northeast of Los Angeles. There are reports some of the bodies were burned. Two cars with bullet holes were also found. We are live from the hit zone, all the very latest from tropical cyclone Kiralee as more of the state's north braces for impact. Post office price hike, how much extra will you be spending to send your packages? Are you prepared? As intense rainfall looms over the southeast, we reveal a vital household safety check that could save you a fortune. Plus, a tropical paradise, hotel stays or premium memberships. At the end of sport, all the ways you can spend tonight's record-breaking Powerball. Checking finance now, the stock market has closed higher. The All Lords up 37 points. Our dollar is buying 65 US cents. The average price for unleaded petrol in Brisbane is $2.06. Diesel is $1.97. The average price of unleaded on the Gold Coast is $2.07. Fuel prices are still high. Drivers should delay filling the tank. Another day, another price rise. This time, the cost of a stamp is set to soar to $1.50. The consumer watchdog has officially approved the increase that Australia Post hopes will help slow its massive financial losses. The price of a stamp is set to jump 25% as Australia Post tries to claw its way back into profitability. The ACCC today approving a plan to raise the cheaper stamps from $1.20 to $1.50. Larger letters lifted to $3 and the biggest ones $4.50. The watchdog acknowledging this will have some impact on consumers and small businesses, but Australia Post still says... It's not enough. That 30 cents uh, would, still doesn't cover, get us anywhere near covering the cost of delivering letters, but it's taking us in the right direction. The National Postie delivered a $200 million loss last financial year, triggering an overhaul from the government and regulator. Letters now only need to be delivered every second day, allowing it to focus more on its parcels. And it says it handled 100 million of those in just the last three months. Letters are in a, an unstoppable decline, is the reality, but we've got the support we need you know, in the short term, we'll continue to work with governments on that. They've got a long way to go before they can compete on an even footing with big commercial partners like Amazon, who are offering free delivery to members within 24 or 48 hours. Australia Post is nowhere near that quick and, uh, and they cost more. There could be more price hikes to come, but for now, the ACCC estimates this increase will only cost the average household about an extra $4 a year. That said, they will be holding open submissions until February 15 before making a final decision. Chris Kohler, Nine News. Let's go back to Andrew now, who's in Townsville. For the latest on tropical cyclone Kiralee, Andrew, she's certainly packing a punch there as she makes landfall tonight. I'll tell you what, Alison, uh, we're just hours from seeing uh, the eye of the storm hit us right here in Townsville. It's right now uh, scraping over Magnetic Island, if you will, and as she barrels closer, you can, you can feel these winds getting stronger and stronger each time they, they burst through. Areas uh, south of us from Makaida, the Sundays and Bowen, they've, they've already been copying it today. Uh, and not far from here, Lily Greer is at Alpha Beach tonight. Uh, Lily, just in the last half hour, the winds have, have really picked up. Yeah, that's right, Andrew. Just when you think it can't get worse, it does. Kiralee's swirling wind and rain is smashing the region right now. You can see behind me there is a cluster of palm trees over here. We were over there today. That is a caravan park. All of the caravans have been moved away from out underneath the trees because there were concerns that those trees were going to come down. And those concerns are very valid because just while we've been waiting here, waiting to go live to you, this palm tree smashed down in the front yard of the very kind locals who are letting us stay at their place for the moment. Just as well, they parked their car under cover because it didn't get smashed and it has just very narrowly missed their property. We were watching it this afternoon. It was creaking and we were here the moment that it came down. Take a listen. Just when you think it couldn't get any worse here, it picks right up and intensifies. Kira... Oh, oh. Oh. Go get it, go get it, go get it. And it's just as well no one was outside when that happened because that could have caused some serious heartache tonight. I can tell you tonight, homes here at Alba Beach, a lot of them have lost power. People, as you can understand, no one is leaving their homes. They are locked down because the conditions...
conditions here, Andrew, they are getting more volatile by the minute. It'll be a very long night for people here. We're going to stay in the region and bring you the very latest tomorrow on what they go through here tonight. Stay safe, Lily. Thank you. Alison, uh, the latest from the, the Bureau is that we're seeing wind gusts up to 165 k's uh, in the eye of the storm tonight. So uh, we'll be back with uh, the full weather forecast with Luke Bradham a little bit later in the bulletin. A wild few hours ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Lofty. We'll check back in uh, with you and also with Luke soon. Well, Jonathan Upton is live at Melbourne Park. Jono, sadly, Storm Hunters' open campaign has come to an end. Yes, brave in defeat in the double semi-final, Alison. We'll have that soon. Also, the Aussie cricketer who's on the outer with teammates at the Gabba Test. The Big Bash champions locked out of celebrations, unable to open their new trophy case. It has been 53 years since a cyclone tracked directly over Townsville. All that is about to change. Tropical Cyclone currently now less than 60 kilometres off the Townsville coast and on track for a sooner than expected arrival. All the details coming up soon. Incredibly fun, remarkably functional and effortlessly stylish. Introducing the all-new Ford Puma. A compact SUV that really packs a punch. Looking good has never been this easy. Secure yours today. The all-new Ford Puma. Effortlessly stylish. Good evening. There's been a stark difference between Australia and the West Indies on the first day in Brisbane with Mitchell Stark's pink ball prowess wreaking havoc. Fans set for another short Gabba test after the tourist decision to bat came back to haunt them. Cameron Green stood alone for the national anthem. COVID positive, the all-rounder cleared to play, but forced to keep his distance as Josh Hazelwood struck an early blow. Cam Green realising <laughs> with the COVID restrictions, that's as, as much as he can get. And the Hoff says, clear my space. Get out. In just his third test match, West Indies batsman Kirk McKenzie showed positive intent. Oh, crunch through the offside. But the 23-year-old Jamaican lacked patience. Edged away, good catch. Australia's pacemen sharing the spoils in a dominant opening session, but Green couldn't even congratulate Australia's pink ball specialist on his latest milestone. Mitch Stark has 350 test wickets. The fifth Aussie to achieve the feat. Last year's Gabba test lasted less than two days. This one destined to be short and sweet as well. And he has another. Five down at T. Even the ball staying socially distant from Green in the gully after the break. The West Indies barely holding off a total collapse before the lights had even turned on at the Gabba. But middle order pair Cavum Hodge and Joshua De Silva showed some fight. That's going to go all the way to six. A 50 run partnership, still a long way from digging themselves out of a hole. Mark Gottlieb, Nine News. Heat players are cashing in after ending Brisbane's 11-year title drought in the Big Bash. The success spawning lucrative international deals. But celebrations hit a snag today. The big celebratory bash in Brisbane put on hold. The Heat unable to unlock their trophy case and forced to improvise. The contents a priceless piece of excess baggage. It was really satisfying to be standing there and holding the trophy with the... Um, till glitter floating down. It's a pretty special moment that we won't forget for a long time. A 54-run win over the Sydney Sixers in the BBL final, anchored by another whirlwind innings from Josh Brown. Two six in a row for Brown. The 30-year-old Brisbane grade cricketer earning a maiden international contract in the process that starts tomorrow in Bangladesh. I'm still trying to take it all in. Like It's been yeah, a crazy week so far. So it's only just beginning, hopefully. The Heat's depth stretched throughout the final series, playing without their star overseas imports and test players who watched on from afar. Spencer Johnson's four-wicket haul to be named player of the final, making his omission from Australia's T20 series against the West Indies all the more surprising. I'd like to be in there and playing for Australia is what I want to do, but um, it is what it is. It's always challenging who you drop, who you pick and who you, who you rest, etc. but he's high on the list of playing, I would think. The Brisbane Heat now join the Sixers and the Scorchers as the only Big Bash franchises to have won multiple BBL titles. He is Adam Jackson, 9 News.
Novak Djokovic will again play here in the afternoon for a spot in his 11th Australian Open final. The world number one hit the practice courts ahead of tomorrow's matchup with fourth seed Yannick Sinner. Last night, Alexander Zverev upset second seed Carlos Alcaraz, defeating the Spaniard in four sets. He'll take on Daniel Medvedev in the night's semi-final, a man he's beaten only once in their last six meetings. He's obviously extremely difficult to play. There's no question about it. He's one of the best players in the world right now. Um, but obviously, I'm happy in the position I am, and I'm going to do everything I can to, to win that match. Doubles delight for Aussie Matt Ebden, winning his way through to his second Melbourne Park final. But Storm Hunter's campaign is over. The Queenslander losing her semi in three sets. Tennis continues straight after news. It is the women's semi finals night. Alison? And we look forward to that. Thanks, Jono. Well, it's not a game of strategy and there's no guarantees anyone will claim the major prize. Yet one in two Aussies are expected to enter tonight's $150 million Powerball. Now is your last chance to buy a ticket that could change your life. Half of all Aussies against all odds. Still one ball could change it all. $150 million Powerball draw tonight. It's the equal second largest in the history of Australian lotteries. And if one person takes it all, they'll become the biggest winner the country's seen. Have you bought a ticket? Just bought one. What do you reckon your chances are? Oh, Hopefully pretty slim. Win. But it's nice to dream big. People want to set themselves up for the future, set up their kids or their parents, uh, and then occasionally we talk about the fun little toys. I'd pay off my mortgage, give some to my family, family and I would probably open up an animal sanctuary like everybody else. You get a few things. <laughs> what would you spend it on? $150 million will get you about enough Brisbane Broncos premium memberships to fill Suncorp Stadium this NRL season. But with that much money, you might just consider buying the naming rights. Fancy a staycation, you could book out all the guest rooms at the Kalal Hotel for the next four and a half years or secure your own slice of tropical paradise. Pumpkin Island in the Great Barrier Reefs on the market now. With your winnings, you could purchase it eight times over. Last week's $100 million draw, we saw more than 7,000 tickets sold in a single minute at 5.46pm. You have about half an hour to put yourself in the draw. Abby Geeran, Nine News. Wouldn't it be nice? Well, in just three minutes, are you prepared? An intense rainfall looms across the southeast. We reveal the vital household safety check that could save you a fortune. That is ahead. But first, Luke Bradman is back now live from Bowen. Luke, where are we seeing most of the rain from tropical cyclone Kiralee? Well, Alison, right now to the north of the system and also the west, but from tomorrow, drenching falls on the way for large parts of the state. All of all the latest, the full forecast coming up next. South East Queenslanders are hoping for the best but preparing for the worst as they watch the track of Cyclone Kiralee. Sandbag stations have opened across the South East with everyone urged to be prepared. The 2022 floods seem to come from nowhere. Suddenly we got this, this biblical rainstorm, just, just the heavens open. Now, when there are summer storms forecast in the southeast, many aren't willing to take any chances. It's just better than thinking it's not going to happen, so I won't do anything. All Queenslanders are being urged to stay across weather warnings and forecasts this long weekend and remain prepared including organising an emergency kit. We recommend storing water in containers just as a precaution and as a general rule of thumb, around 10 litres per person. I've got the torch, some light and batteries there. Queenslanders are also being urged to check their overflow relief gullies for any blockages to make sure wastewater is able to flow onto the ground outside of your home in case of excessive rain. It's designed to direct an overflow outside your home uh, rather than inside your home um, if there's a blockage in your plumbing or if there's excess stormwater in our wastewater network. A lot of people do put pot plants yeah. on their ORGs, but it's best to keep them clear. Making sure your gutters are clear of leaves and that stormwater pipes aren't connected to the wastewater network. Meg Sides, Nine News. Switch on a Dakin Alira X split system with advanced streamer technology to remove more than 99% of harmful indoor air pollutants and surround yourself with cleaner air this summer. Dakin, perfecting the air. Let's go back to Andrew now in Townsville. 
Thanks, Alison. Look, we're, we're just a few hours away from the peak of this Category 3 storm and evacuation centres here have now closed their doors for the night. They are now in lockdown. Our weather expert, Luke Bradnam, is in Bowen tonight. Luke, uh, Akiridi certainly speeding up. Yeah, that's right, Lofty. Kiralee has arrived. Make no mistakes, these winds we're experiencing at the moment are so from Cyclone Kiralee. Won't officially cross the coast, though, until the eye does, and that's currently less than 60 k's from where you are, Lofty, uh, Townsville at the moment. Currently tracking at 26 kilometres an hour. I have it on track at maintaining that speed to, to cross just after 9 p.m. this evening. Have a look at the temperatures today from around the southeast. Another warm one up in the low 30s for everybody. 33 the warmest for Ipswich. Uh, 31 for the city and the Gold Coast. Top of just 30 today for the Sunshine Coast. Tomorrow's weather map, ex-tropical cyclone Kiralee will begin her trek through the southwest of our state, uh, bringing falls of potentially 100 to 200 millimetres to large communities through the west as she makes her way towards the Northern Territory. If you're heading interstate tomorrow, a possible shower on the way for Sydney and Canberra, partly cloudy for Melbourne and Adelaide, and showers and possible storms in the top end for Darwin. Here in North Queensland tomorrow. Obviously storm force winds tonight. Uh, they will ease as the storm continues to move west but we'll have a gale warning still for Cairns through to the Mackay coast. The rain could linger around till mid-morning and those winds easing by the afternoon. Charters towers tomorrow could see up to 50 millimetres. Through the Capricornia coast a shower or two uh, possible for Rocky and Gladstone and lighter falls possible through the Fraser coast and in the southeast a partly cloudy day. Slight chance of showers for inland areas. Another warm one the sunny coast getting to 31, 35 the top for Ipswich and 31 again for the Gold Coast. Out on the bay, a nice morning, but by the afternoon, seas getting up to one and a half metres. And for the city, a top of 33, dropping down to 23. And then looking ahead, Saturday, a scorch up 37 degrees and a possible storm. A possible storm again on Sunday, slightly cooler with 34. And then a shower or two for Monday. Ipswich on Saturday reaching 38 degrees with a possible storm. Sunday 35 and again a possible storm. And for the Gold Coast, 34 the top for Saturday. Sunday reaching 32 with possible storms over the weekend. And for the sunny coast, a pretty similar outlook. Uh, Saturday mostly sunny though and top of 35 degrees. Here in North Queensland, Lofty just a couple of hours away. It really is time for us all to go and bunker down. Good on you, Luke. Nice work. Well, Alison, uh, uh, the residents here and across North Queensland coast are in for a long and anxious night as we get buffeted now uh, by more of these winds. Uh, a fair bit of damage already, uh, trees and power lines down, uh, and the worst of it is still to come. Uh, we'll be here for all of it, though, our team of reporters working tirelessly tonight to bring you TV's most comprehensive coverage tomorrow. It's going to be a topsy-turvy night. Yeah, stay safe, Andrew, and that is Nine News. Thank you.